Welcome to a special episode of Dubu's Diary. Uh, Dubu is now one year old, and I thought um, I'd put a collection of video clips from the past year and uh, go over the different challenges and things we've learned about uh, raising a puppy. I think the first thing looking back is uh, you can never have enough video clips of your dog. Um, looking back, especially when we first had him as a puppy, uh, I wish we had more video, that we would have captured more of these mm. special moments with our puppy when he was, you know, this size and had this, you know, kind of special puppy behavior. And uh, going back now, looking at these clips, I'm amazed at, like, how just how much he's grown and how different he looks. Like, honestly, he looks so skinny in some of these, like... Uh, older videos and his hair is is something else as well too you look at him now and you look at him like when he was a puppy he's almost looks like a completely different dog and i guess that's that's what happens with with time early on um you know <laughs> i'm looking at some of the things as well that we had for the dog and some of the mistakes uh, that we've made um well, the challenges, especially walking, uh, watching some of these walking clips, we went through a bazillion different harnesses and leashes, and training him how to walk was maybe one of the most difficult things we had to do, um, especially figuring out what the best leash combination and, and harness combination was, because he liked to pull a lot, and he uh, really liked to kind of explore and sniff. But uh, certainly interesting, the stuff that we run into when we do walks. Um, but yeah, just look at him. He's like this skinny little wiry dog with this wonderful tail. Now we're looking at some of the, the toys and stuff that we got from over time. This is probably one of the best things we bought, this kind of tornado puzzle toy. And uh, as well, you can see in the background, we have this pen that we use to kind of you know, control his kind of, when he had tantrums, and as well give him a little more free space. But didn't really last that long. Like I, I think we found that we only kept him in the pen for maybe a couple months. Um, and he certainly always didn't like it, but um, it did give us a break from him because during this time he was just a crazy dog. A crazy dog. I can see why like people suffered like what they call through these puppy blues because you know at this this age these dogs are really hard to handle. They have really sharp teeth, they're pretty destructive, and you just never know what the, how they're going to behave. We tried different types of, you know, little bedding mats. Uh, this was uh, in my little office here when I tried to get them to settle. Um, we bought a couple of these uh, Kularoo-like uh, beds, and, and we actually we like those, and they worked out pretty well. But it, it took a little while. Uh, training Dubu was kind of interesting because early on, like I. You know, teaching him how to play fetch was fairly easy, but he's he's since kind of regressed Good since then. Good boy, sit. You know, it's fun sit. watching him uh, kind of learn. Dubu Good loves boy. the snow. I'm a little worried you're getting a little cold, but... One of the few videos where we have him in a bathtub, uh, we found that cleaning his feet using a bathtub was probably the best way to kind of manage that. But uh, he's become a lot better since That's putting him in a bath. Now, this is the longest you've been in the bathtub. Other tricks that we've tried to use to kind of calm his behavior is use like a, a frozen face cloth. Um, and this one, I think, what might have been like, a, like chicken broth. But we found that he just ended up, he starts eating the cloth itself. Eventually, we moved out of downstairs, and Dubu's got his own room now, along with um, a camera, a wise camera that we use uh, that's really helpful to check and see how he's doing when when he's sleeping and making sure he's out of trouble. But um, it also doubles as kind of like a security camera in our house, but uh, very helpful and uh, very useful. Um, so Dubu's got his own room. Like uh, He's a very special dog. Be still Kratom. As you can see in this one, one of his favorite foods is boiled egg. And we do that as kind of as a, uh, how would you say, um, okay. impulse control exercise. 
Um, as the weather started getting nicer, we would spend more time outside, and just to kind of have them socialize with the environment outside. This is uh, one of the best things to do, just kind of sit on our veranda and watch the world go by. Um, our backyard as well too, but the one thing we found difficult with, with uh, him in the backyard is just he just like, likes to pick up everything and eat everything, including rocks and the mulch that we have in our garden. Um, so we have to be careful about that. Uh, so toys, we, f we, we found that on the most part, buying, you know, dog toys from the store, but not that great because he just tears through them really quickly. The ones that are more chew resistance were better and can either from the dollar store or from like your your local pet store but the you know like the plush animals and stuff like that uh, he would just they just wouldn't last. Um, one of the ones that did last a little bit was this cow but even then he would uh, eventually like chew through all the different bits and you know like the ears and the tail and eventually his arm but uh, this was one of the ones that lasted longer than normal. Dubu got neutered this past year and it was a challenging time for him for sure. Um, we found like the soft e-collar was much better than the hard plastic one so it was kind of nice that he was kind of you know laid back for you know about a a week and a bit but it was really also kind of sad seeing him in like you know in discomfort and not happy but he did get better and he was back on his feet in no time one of the things that we were expecting to see after neutered was that he would stop marking but you know that didn't really change much and he still marks a lot and as a dog owner what you'll find is you'll become obsessed with their pee and potty schedule. You almost be, have this kind of anxiety to make sure that you know you take him out enough just so he doesn't have any accident inside the house. Um, so we would take him out very regularly to make sure that he doesn't have any accidents. As well, like checking out his poop was often a very important thing as well too because you know sometimes he eats something and he got to do this really unpleasant task of like checking his poop to see that it's passed. As well, you know, um, if his poop is you know soft or if he's got like diarrhea or whatever, um, keeping like a journal of that was also uh, pretty helpful. But yeah, dog owners will be obsessive about their poop and pee schedule. So we were hoping that after he was neutered, he'd be more calm, like in this little clip here. But um, he's still a, he's still a pretty crazy dog. Like he still gets into these kind of crazy zoomy instances, like mostly in the evenings between eight and nine. Um, and we tried different strategies to kind of like distract him. Uh, and one that was really quite successful are these, you know, little plastic bottles. You'd always have to kind of like, you know, make sure that he doesn't eat them. But he would be, it would, these would be really good um, ways of, you know, keeping him busy. We try other things, tissue boxes, you know, see how he likes that, uh, as well as egg cartons. But, but the paper ones really, he just kind of like tears through pretty quickly. But, you know, for a couple minutes, anyways, they can keep him entertained. Even a kimchi like container. Although the the big ones we found were were difficult for him to manage, even though like you know he'd be very curious and he'd play with them a little bit. Dog parks. So we avoided dog parks for the longest time, but then uh, we we uh, talked with a personal trainer, um, and she was suggesting that um, taking him to dog parks more often is probably to his benefit because he's a very social dog. So there's a couple in our neighborhood that are good. One is gated, and this one, which is Wildwood crescent uh, but man he would be a total mess when we first started taking them because like there's mostly dirt you know so if he starts running around his feet and his mouth area would just get like filthy but later in the season what they did was they put down a whole bunch of wood chips like 
you know, I think between like 8 to 12 inches thick, which made a huge difference in terms of, uh, you know, him getting dirty. Um, so we take him to the dog park a lot more often, at least twice a week, uh, sometimes more. In the wintertime, that it's getting colder, it's, it's a little more difficult um, as well. There's, there aren't as many dogs we find that go to the park. You can see how now he's, he's like so much chubbier than he used to be when he was like, you know, a few months old. Uh, we're wondering if part of it is because uh, he hasn't really had a haircut, um, like a full grooming session in quite a long time. We will, or Jamie will like cut his hair every now and then, but he's a lot furrier now than than he used to be. But, you know, we wonder like after he gets a full grooming, if, if he'll look... A lot skinnier, like 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 he did when he was, you know, like a few months old. But uh, he's he's you know really quite happy at dog parks. He gets he gets a lot of good exercise and gets to meet other dogs and socialize. Now that it's getting colder, um, you know, we are resorted to to more kind of like you know trying to get him to get his exercise in our, our neighborhood. And uh, one challenge is he just loves the snow digging around in there. And uh, as well, like on the street or or in our backyard, and uh, you know, we'll he'll poke around, he'll dig through, he'll eat, and uh, you know, he just loves it. Uh, we even he's even got you know booties and as well as a regular winter coat, and even a a fancier red coat that you can see here. Um, you know, that we had to make some minor alterations because they're a bit too big for him. But, you know, he keeps warm. He still likes to... And he still likes to, like, you know, grab stuff and, and head away. All right. Thanks for watching this one-year retrospective of having a dog. See you next time on Dubu's Diary.